Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this premier service of the Anchor Baptist Church on this 22nd day of August 2021. Thank you for taking some time on this Sunday afternoon to tune in. We pray that God's Word will be a challenge, encouragement to each and every one of us. Uh, here at Anchor Baptist Church, we've been working our way through in these afternoon meetings We've been working our way through the Lord's model prayer. And so, would you please turn with me in your Bible to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And while you're turning there, just a couple announcements for the Anchor Baptist Church family. We praise the Lord once again for the meeting that we had uh, this morning here uh, at the church. And of course, uh, my family and I are on the island and I've been preaching there in Victoria. Looking forward to coming back home uh, later tomorrow. Pray for us if you would, and we thank you in advance for that. Now on Tuesday night, we're going to meet at 6.30. Tuesday night, 6.30, meeting here at the church for some for a time of outreach. And I trust you'll join with us to be a part of that. And uh, we need to uh, get back into that on a regular basis, and so we're trying to schedule some times. Unfortunately, our Saturdays um, this coming week and the following are, are booked. And uh, so... Well, I, I would say that they're booked one week for the ladies and then the next week for the men. But anyway, this Tuesday, 6.30 at the church office. And I trust that you'll be able to come and be a part of that. Thank you for your continued prayers for the church meeting location. And um, we're seeking the Lord's will in all of this. Now, uh, again, it's we, we missed last Sunday. We did not have a premier service last Sunday. I apologize for not communicating that effectively. We did communicate it on Sunday, but... I found out that on Sunday, uh, the announcements, I don't think, were heard online uh, because we were having some technical difficulties with our live stream. And so I should have put a note up on the church page. And so forgive me for that. But here we are, Matthew chapter 6. I hope you found it by now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to read one verse and get into this study. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of having this meeting. Thank you for the Word of God that no matter how we're uh, listening to the Word of God, or reading the Word of God, or uh, studying it, or whatever it may be, it is the power. It is life-changing. And so today we're asking that your Holy Spirit would change us through the Word of God today. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would empty us of self, fill us with your Spirit, speaker and listener alike, and we want you to have all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're looking at the model prayer, which is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And so we're in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6. Look at verse number 13 with me, if you would. Verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Primarily looking at that statement, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Notice the first word of verse 13 is the word and. The word and. And so this word ties in this request with the previous ones. What have we been asking about in previous weeks? We've been asking for bread. Uh, we've been asking for forgiveness uh, of our own. We've also been asking for um, uh, our grace that we need to forgive others. I believe that's what we talked about last time. And so now uh, we're going into this area of prayer is about relying Prayer is about relying. What we have in this one verse of Scripture is the trust that we are placing in the Lord for the greatest battle that every one of us will face, really, each and every day. And it is the battle regarding uh, temptation. It is the battle uh, regarding having victory. Victory. Now, praise the Lord that when we come to Christ as our personal Savior, we have eternal life. I was going over that uh, this a week ago with someone that uh, John 10 says, And I give unto them eternal life, Jesus said, and they shall never perish. Um, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father and I are one. I and my Father are one, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I might have mixed that up a little bit, but we have eternal security. That doesn't mean, though, that doesn't mean, though, that we are immune to the attack of the devil. In fact, uh, the devil is not attacking, really, in the sense of me personally, when I'm unsaved, he's trying to keep me blinded, he's trying to keep the gospel from coming to me. Uh, but once I get saved, now, boy, 
you know, all guns, so to speak, are aiming at me because remember what we've learned in recent days, and really maybe not just in recent days, but whatever God loves, Satan hates. So once I join the family of God and get saved, now, wow, I tell you what, Satan hates me. I mean, he hated me before that, but now he's trying to destroy me because he doesn't want me to bring glory. And I'm saying me, but I'm referring to all born-again believers. He doesn't want us, we'll change that, to bring any glory to God because he hates God, first and foremost. And so anyone that loves God or wants to live for God, uh, Satan is sending him, his demons uh, against us, and the attack is on, and it's real. It's real. He's not wearing a red suit. He doesn't have a pitchfork. In fact, he looks pretty good, quite frankly. The Bible calls him an angel of light. And anyway, so this lesson today with regards to the model prayer is about relying on the Lord for spiritual victory. There's no reason for a child of God to live in defeat. There's no reason for a child of God to continuously um, give in to the temptation that does come our way. And we'll talk about it. Temptation is not sin. Okay? Uh, otherwise, Jesus would have sinned. And we know he didn't sin. The Bible says that he was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. So, let's get into this outline this afternoon. Number one, we see the predicament of temptation. The predicament of temptation. Notice what the Lord tells us to pray. And lead us not into temptation. We decided to temptation. So, in thinking about this, does this mean that God leads me, that a holy God leads you, that a holy God leads us into places where we could be or where we are tempted? Now, God's in control of everything, right? I believe that. God is sovereign, right? I believe that. And uh, we used to sing it, that he leads his dear children along. Some through this and some through that. But God leads us to your children along. And so does that mean that God leads us into temptation? The answer to that question is a big no. He does not lead us into temptation. Excuse me. Turn to James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James chapter number 1. And look what it says with me in verse number 13. God's Word says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of who, church? That's right, God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. His own lust. I mean, it, within us, within you, within me, uh, you know, in our flesh, the Bible says, dwelleth no good thing. And so uh, there is, there, there's so much evil in this world today. Uh, there's so much um, wickedness in this world today. But I want to tell you, all of that, we have the capability. Whatever you, whatever you think I'm talking about, uh, it might be your sin or my sin, quite frankly. I'm just saying we have that, that, that wickedness is in us if we let it get out of control uh, because the, the, the lust is in the old man still. And so that's when <clears throat> I'm drawn away of my own uh, desires, of my own wants and wishes. And so the predicament of temptation. When Adam was tempted and fell into sin in the Garden of Eden, he tried to blame um, even the Lord. Go with me to Genesis chapter 3. Isn't this interesting? Genesis chapter 3. Notice what Adam, and maybe you've read this, but notice what Adam says here in verse 12, and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. Now, he, it kind of sounds like he's putting it on Eve at first, but he's saying, You're the one that gave me this woman, God. So, uh, you know, why did you give me this woman? I guess maybe is what he's asking. So, uh, but God was not to blame. Adam was to blame. Adam had the ability to choose to say no, even to Eve. We know that he did in Romans 5.12. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, uh, there's options. There's decisions that you and I have to make. Uh, it's coming. It'll come your way today, even on the Lord's day. It'll come when you least expect it. 
and uh, uh, they're, they're coming uh, th from the side and we can't see them. They're coming from the back. I'm talking about temptation. I'm talking about challenges. I'm talking about, even if you will, trials that come into our life and we have the privilege and the opportunity to go through them with um, God helping us and seeing victory through these, giving God all the glory, or, unfortunately, uh, there is the potential of falling as well and failing as well. Now again, we looked at James a minute ago, but I want you to go back with me once again to James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1. <clears throat> And uh, we read verse 13 a minute ago. I should have had you keep your Bible open there. Let's read 14 and 15 this time. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. We, we read that. And enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth what? It bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Okay, so tempted isn't the issue, it's lust conceiving, and now it leads to sin, and sin always leads to death. See, the flesh is hopelessly flawed, okay? Again, as we've said, in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. If we're not relying on the Holy Spirit of God as Christians, if we're not relying on the Word of God as a sharp two-edged sword in our life, then we are hopelessly flawed and we crave sin. In our, in, our, in, our, in our flesh, we crave the vilest of sins. Look, friends, we can't, we can't uh, uh, play around uh, with the thoughts and the intents. We can't uh, let imaginations come into our life because we're to cast those things down. Uh, anything that exalts itself against the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm to cast it down. Uh, it is true. It, there is within me, there is within you, uh, absolutely nothing of any good value in our flesh. Ephesians 4.22. Ephesians 4.22. God's Word says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt. The old man is corrupt. The old Ben is corrupt. The old fill-in-the-blank, whatever your name, it's corrupt. Uh, why? According to the deceitfulness, excuse me, according to the deceitful lust. Uh, and Paul says this, this needs to be put off. This needs to be cast away. Uh, we need to not get as close to the line as possible. We don't want to get as close to the edge as possible without falling over. No, we want to get away from the line. We want to get away from the edge. Why? Because temptation is right there. And when we're so close, now we're susceptible to fall. And now we're susceptible to fail. Kind of like David in 2 Samuel chapter number 11. Was it a sin that he saw Bathsheba uh, bathing on the rooftop. Uh, I don't believe it was. I believe things like that happen in our everyday life uh, that we should not be seeing that come. But here's the problem. David wasn't even supposed to be there. That's the problem. David was supposed to be in battle. You see, when, we're not, when, we, when we are not where we are supposed to be, then we are setting ourselves up for the predicament of temptation. And when we set ourselves up for temptation, let me tell you this, we are no match for Satan. We are no match how he can, he can twist exactly what you need and what I need to fail. In fact, my t things that tempt me may not even tempt you, and vice versa. The thing is, he was not where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be in battle, and yet uh, he failed. And yet he ended up yielding what? What did he yield to? Okay, He yielded to the temptation, yes, but he yielded to the lust of his flesh because in his flesh it was deceitfulness in his flesh in that old man we have the same capability of anything you read about and you say man that is terrible and you see current events on the news and you say that is terrible how can someone do that to someone else i'll tell you you and i have the same capabilities within our flesh because the flesh is deceitful the flesh cannot be trusted and we need to, with, by the grace of God, we need to get away from the line. We need to get away uh, from the edge. And we need to put so many uh, barriers. And we need to stop giving place to the enemy. Because I'm telling you, the predicament of temptation is real. But we can avoid it. Don't set yourself up. 
Once the story says, once there were two monks who were journeying along a path. When they came to a crossing there, there was attempting to cross. They came to this river. There was a lady there, a young woman, and she was frightened and she could not get across. One of the monks picked the young lady up and carried her across the stream and put her down on the other side. The two went on. The two monks went on walking along the way. And, and um, finally, the silence was broken by one of the monks. And he said, I'm troubled by something. He said, as you know, our order uh, prohibits us from even looking upon a woman, much less touching one. And back there at the creek, back there at the river, if you will, you pick that woman up and you carry her across and you seem to not be bothered by your transgression at all. The second monk said to the his friend, he said, My brother, I put that woman down back by the river's bank, but you still carry her in your heart. Wow. That's the essence of temptation right there. Can we cast it down? Can we cast down the imagination? That's the essence of temptation right there. It is in the heart of man. It is in the thoughts of man. And when we pray, Father, uh, forgive my debts, I'm looking back to the past. And when we pray, give me this day our daily bread, I'm looking into the present. But when I pray, Lord, lead me not into temptation, I'm looking into the future. And so, quite frankly, this is an all-encompassing model prayer. The predicament of temptation. The essence of this prayer is for protection from the sins of the flesh so that God is not dishonored. Every time I sin, I'm dishonoring a holy God. The Bible says we need to bring honor and glory to Him, that He deserves all honor and glory and praise. And so as I'm praying, dear God, lead me not into temptation. I'm saying, dear God, help me to be wise as a serpent. Dear God, help me not to get close to the edge. Dear God, help me not to uh, get close to the, uh, to the, um, to the cliff. Uh, dear God, help me not to get close to the line. Uh, help me to stay as far away from it as possible. Thank the Lord for His forgiveness. But, this is a prayer, this is a predicament, excuse me, of temptation. The predicament of temptation. Now, here's, here's something to, to, to chew on. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We are not without help. We are not without help. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, look down please, if you will, at verse number 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being what? Tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. So, first off, the first part of the verse is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tempted, remember, in the garden, or excuse me, coming out of the, the desert, he was tempted uh, after having uh, fasted 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 4, I believe. He was tempted there. And so, because he was tempted, he is able to succor them. What does that word mean? It means he's able to aid them. He's able to help them that are tempted. We have one who can strengthen us in times of temptation so that, yes, even when that temptation comes, and again, it will come, again, it comes like a thief in the night. Sometimes. It can come just across the eye gate. It can come when we weren't planning on it, but we've been in our Bible, we've been praying, we've been seeking the Lord, we've been saying, God, lead me not into temptation. And so when that thought comes, boom, we can cast it down. We can bring up a verse of Scripture. We can start singing a hymn. We can start praying. And what's happening? We're being suckered by the Lord. We're being aided by the Lord. He's helping us when that temptation comes. And I'm thankful that He is all-powerful and there isn't any temptation that comes our way that we cannot overcome by the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit of God who is indwelling you and indwelling me as believers. So number one, the predicament of the temptation. Number two is the potency of temptation. The potency of temptation. The great need for us to pray for the Lord's protection from temptation is, is that way because all of us, as we've said already, are prone to fail or failure. Temptation is simply an outgrowth of who we are 
by nature. Okay? And I, this isn't a fatalist approach, but this is just saying that it is coming because of who I am on the inside. Have you ever heard someone say, the devil really knows what to put in front of me, or the devil made me do it? Again, I would submit to you that it is not so much the devil that is the problem. The problem is, uh, he enhances the problem. Yes, he, is the, uh, he stirs it up, if you will. He reminds us of these things. But uh, uh, what, what did James say? He said it was my own lust in James 1.14. He said that because of that, I am enticed. What does this word mean? Enticement, it means to bait. To bait. Just like a fisherman baits the hook. Just like a trapper baits the trap. When we are tempted, the old man is baiting the new man to go back to the ways of the old man. The old man is tempting the new man to come back to the ways of the old life. And, and what does the devil do? The devil, and the devil helps the old man, sure. Yeah, the devil plays a part in this. This isn't to say that the devil plays no part in this, but uh, there is a constant pull. It, 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 the comparison here as an illustration is the undertow in the ocean. Now, I haven't been in the ocean for a while in this kind of way, but when you yield to the power of the undertow, what does it do? It just sweeps you away wherever it wants you to go. And uh, it's not very easy. It's not very difficult if you just let the undertow take you. Now, very dangerous, though, in some kind, in places. Many people have drowned. But when we try to go against the undertow in an ocean... Then we begin to feel the great power that is there within that water as what I'm trying to do is go against where the ocean is trying to take me. Now we've got a conflict. Now we've got a battle on our hand. That's exactly what happens during temptation. When we yield to the flesh, when we yield to the world, when we yield to our own uh, sinful man, then guess what? No problem. Easy going. Easy going. It takes us wherever it pleases. And by, might I remind you, you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose your consequences. You can choose your sin, but you cannot choose... Hey, you can live every, any way you want. God will let you do that. Now, at some point, if you're saved, I believe God does take people to heaven if they're not going to get saved, not going to, excuse me, not get saved, if they're not going to repent, if they're not going to humble themselves because they're doing a disservice to the name of Christ. I do believe that can happen. But you can choose however however you want to sin, but you cannot choose what comes back to you. Yes, God forgives, but, but, but there's also uh, reaping that has to come from all the planting. As some have said before, we want to sow our wild oats and then pray for a crop failure. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Now, I'm thankful for the grace of God that helps us even when the crops are coming in from our sin. God's grace can help us and He is merciful. But we cannot think for a moment that we can live a certain way and just expect nothing to happen. Well, again, back to the illustration. But when we stand our ground and we refuse to yield to temptation and we refuse to yield to the flesh, when we refuse to yield to the enemy, it's a siren call, if you will. And now, look out. Now the battle's on. That's why before we get saved, we can just live however we want, and there's nothing really that's bothering us. When we get saved, and then we say, and then we decide, oh, you know what? I can't live that way. I can't do that anymore. I can't drink that anymore. I can't smoke that anymore. I shouldn't be talking that way anymore. I shouldn't be watching that movie anymore. And, and, and it comes on because there's something inside of us that's convicting us. I shouldn't be in part of this anymore. I need to get this out of my life. I need to add this to my life. We get separated from the world, but unto Christ. That's a big thought right there, right there, by the way. You can't just separate from everything worldly. You've got to separate to someone. Like the Bible said, you, you put off, but then you've got to put something else on. You've got to put on uh, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit. You've got to put on the things of the Lord. You've got to put on the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You've got to put on the works of the Spirit. We're putting off the works of the foot, but we've got to put on the works of the Spirit. And so, uh, just like that uh, temptation, if you just go with it, it takes you exactly where it wants you to go. And by the way, you have no idea where it's going to end up. No idea. The power of temptation has no more force in my life than we allow it to have. 
What are you allowing temptation to bring into your life? If we want to stand against it, we can. God has given us the promises of His Word to strengthen us. God has given us the ability uh, to overcome. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, right? There hath no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful. Uh, God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation uh, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Temptation is strong. Temptation is potent. But don't forget, as a Christian, we have God's Spirit living inside of us who is all-powerful. As we yield to the Spirit, we're saying no to temptation. As we yield to the Word of God and the principles in the Word of God, we're saying no to temptation. And this book is more powerful than temptation. And the Holy Spirit of God who's indwelling us is more powerful than temptation. And so we see the predicament. We see the potency. And then we see, number three, the petition in temptation. The petition in temptation. Notice the verse closes back to our text of Matthew 6.13. But deliver us from evil. Verse 13, the middle of the verse, not the end of the verse, but the middle of the thought. Deliver us from the evil one, if you will, we could say. Deliver us from evil. The ultimate goal of the enemy, as we've said repeatedly, is to use us to bring dishonor to God. To bring disgrace to the church of God. To the name of God. That is why we read in the Bible, uh, Ephesians 6 and 12, which says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting you. You're not fighting me. No, we're fighting principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. This chain of command, if you will, all being led by the devil himself. Our enemy does not wear flesh like you and flesh like me. He's a spiritual enemy and, and uh, we can battle him with spiritual weapons. Turn to 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. We were there. 2 Corinthians 10. We battle him with spiritual weapons. 2 Corinthians 10. Verse number 3. Where God's word says, For, we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. There it is. You've read this verse before. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our enemy is spiritual. We battle him with spiritual weapons. We battle him with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We are asking God for help in this battle. Thank God, as the psalmist said, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. God will help us. When we pray this prayer, we recognize the fact that we cannot win in our own flesh. We are no match for the devil. We are no match for the temptation in our own flesh. Again, this is exactly the tactic that was used by the Lord Jesus. He, he set the example, Matthew 4, we won't turn there, but Matthew 4, 1 to 11, make a note of it, maybe read it. He sets the example for us there to use the resources that we have so that we can overcome. You know, again, did he, could he have just said, you know, whatever? Yes, he could have, but what did he do? He quoted scripture from the Old Testament. He quoted what he had. And today, we can use what we have. Think about it, church. What do we have today to overcome temptation? Number one, we have in us the Holy Spirit of God. Jot it down. Don't forget it. Oh, I just can't get victory and blah, 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 blah. That's a bunch of hogwash. You and I have everything that we need to be an overcomer. We're just not using it. We're just not taking what God has given us, the tools, and we're just not, we just, we want to do it our own way. By the way, hey, that's not how it works. 
We don't live the Christian life how we want to live. You know, some people say, I'm going to go to heaven because of this and that and the other thing. But that's not God's way. God says, you're going to go to heaven my way or you're not going to heaven. You might be listening this afternoon and you think you're pretty good. And, and uh, you know, you get to charity and you've never killed anybody. That seems to be the number one thing people think of. Or, you know, you try to tell the truth. You try to work hard. These are all things you're saying, I'm going to get to heaven because of me. I'm going to get to heaven because of my religion. No, that's not what God said. God said in his word, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by him, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. You can try to get your way to heaven, but I'm sorry, you're going to have to go by the way of the word of God. And the word of God says it's only through Jesus and Jesus only. He is the Messiah. And just like he is the way uh, to go to heaven and have uh, forgiveness of sin. There's a way to live the Christian life and so many Christians are trying to get it done their own way and it doesn't work. Let's use what God's given us. Number one, He's given us the person of the Holy Spirit and secondly, He's given us the power of the Word of God. The person of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God. And then, and then we have our armor to wear in Ephesians 6. Jot that down, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. We have the whole armor of God. Again, there's no reason why we should be yielding to temptation. Yes, our strength is weak, but when our strength is weak, He is strong. Yes, we might be decreasing. That's good. When we decrease, He increases. He will never fail you in the day of battle. He will give us the victory if, if we follow his battle plan. You see, this is the prayer about relying. Now, can I ask you this? Are you relying on this principle, these principles? Or are you relying on yourself? Are you relying on how you can win the battle or how you can do it or this or that. Are you relying on what you think is the way it is? And I'm not telling you what I think the way it is. I'm telling you what God's Word says. By the grace of God, I need to live this message as much as you do. We all do together, don't we, as believers. Folks, God will give us the victory if we follow His battle plan the person of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word of God, if those things are working one and the same, and they do, folks, we are a mighty army that can say no to temptation every time. But if we remove those, if we don't yield to the Spirit, if we aren't filled with the Spirit, being controlled by the Spirit, if we aren't applying the Word of God, then I guarantee you, it's going to get ugly. Temptation's going to lead. The lust of the flesh is going to come. The lust of the eyes is going to come. The pride of life is going to come. And it's going to be boom, boom, boom. And then it's going to be done. And we're going to wonder what hit me. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. We didn't follow God's game plan. We didn't follow God's battle instructions. We stopped relying on Him. And somewhere along the line, we got convinced we could do it. That's a lie of the devil. We can't do it, but He can do it through us. Victory is ours for the taking in the great battle of temptation. Can I encourage you today, church, pray every day regarding this relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the same way that you're praying it every day, we must stop putting ourselves in harm's way. It's like having a, having a uh, container full of rattlesnakes and if your infant or toddler, excuse me, son or daughter were to go over toward the rattlesnakes, you wouldn't let them stand even next to the bucket. Just to look in, you'd pull them away from that bucket as far as you possibly could. I don't know anybody that'd want to stand near a bunch of rattlesnakes anyway. Why do we think we can go stand next to worldly television? Why do we think we can go stand next to sensual websites? Why do we think we can go next to things that you struggle with? Why do we think we can listen to gossip and it not affect us? Folks, I'm telling you today, get 
as far away from it as possible. Don't get up next to the rattlesnake pen and put your hand in there and say, Dear God, help me not to get bit by a rattlesnake. That's foolishness. But you know what? That's what, so, that's what Christians do sometimes. Well, God didn't help me. God didn't do it. But yet, here, here it is. It was you. It was me who were putting ourselves right in the middle of it. No, follow the plan of God. Follow the plan of God. Victory is available. Are you ready to follow God's plan? Am I ready to follow God's plan? If so, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, not based on my word, but based on this book right here, you can have victory if you rely on on the Holy Spirit of God and the power of the Word of God. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Partway through the message, we talked about going to heaven. Actually, right toward the end of the message, we talked about going to heaven. There might be someone listening this afternoon and you say, Pastor Turner, I'm not even saved. Pastor Turner, I do not know if I died tonight that I would be in heaven. In fact, I think I might go to hell when I die. I'm not sure. But I'd like to know more about this. I want you to jot down my telephone number. I'm going to give it to you right now. And I want you to send me a text message and tell me, Pastor Turner, I'm not sure I'm saved. My name is whatever. And would you please give me some instruction on this? Could you please direct me to something? My telephone number is 604-603-9784. You can text me as soon as the service is over. Pastor Turner, pray for me. Please help me. I'm not sure I'm saved. I, I, I think I'm going to hell. I, I, I'm not sure. I want to be sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. Again, I don't have the answer, but God's Word does, and I'd be glad to tell you about it. Dear Christian, what about you today? Is there temptation in your life that you've been getting too close to? Are you putting your hand in the rattlesnake uh, container and saying, you know, help me not to get bit? You know exactly what the Holy Spirit of God's doing in your life right now. We need to rely on Him and the Word of God to have victory in this area of our life. Heavenly Father, please bless the Word of God. Lord, may it now be applied to our life. May we not just listen to this truth, but may we apply it. Lord, I pray for that one or more that are even listening right now that are not saved. Oh God, please convict them. Help them not to even be able to get to sleep tonight until they get, get in touch with somebody that can show them how to be saved. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. And again, uh, we are on the winning side as Christians. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are on the winning side. I'd like to continue right before we end this meeting. I'd like, to ask you to I'd like to ask you to please continue to pray for these wildfires that are ongoing in British Columbia. Let's pray for rain. Let's pray for protection for the firefighters. Let's pray for all those that have even lost property and, and homes and and things of that nature that God would minister to them. Let's pray for the churches that are in these areas. Then would you please join with me and continue to pray for the country of Afghanistan. We have some dear friends uh, that uh, we have met in recent days who have family there. And uh, we're trying to figure out what can we do. But we can all pray. And then of course we're praying for the country of Haiti as well. And uh, just pray that God would minister to both of these countries in a mighty way. That there would be a great revival. Remember, God... God means all for good to them that love Him, to them who are called according to His purpose. Thank you so much for being a part of this afternoon premier service. God bless you. Have a great week.